For more information regarding the local impact of the Bay Area wildfires here in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash 2020 fires. Hi, my name is Mark Brunton. I'm the Operations Section Chief for CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3 on the CZU Lightning Complex. And we'll go over uh, the fire for Friday. So uh, today, a lot of good work on the, the incident. Um, weather cooperated again for our ground resources, not so much for our resources to work. On the ground, uh, again, a lot of work on the Botano Park area. Um, still a, a ton of work there. The, the fire is working its way down. Uh, a lot of line has been put in in some of the areas where the fire has progressed to the line, um, been able to get good extinguishment, uh, but then starting to work its way up and, and mopping up very heavy fuels in there and just a lot of work regarding that. But uh, other areas were preparing for the fire to work its way down off the, uh, the ridge uh, ever so slowly. I had a lot of, uh, because of the wind, it's been pushing a lot of smoke into the communities of Pescadero that has been repopulated, as well as all the way up to Half Moon Bay. And um, for those people there, that is normal because the wind is just taking simply the smoke from the fire that direction. It's not that there's an increase of fire or that the fire is threatening those communities. It's just simply the fact that the wind is, is transporting the smoke into that direction. And then in the coming days, we're going to start seeing a change in the direction of the wind, and that should help scour that out of the atmosphere and not be as much of a nuisance. Working it, uh, down the coast, again, a, a extinguishment, but there's a lot of mop up to do there. There's a lot of uh, groves of trees, and particularly the eucalyptus groves, and it, there's deep seated duff, and the, and the fire's uh, been in there, and it's just there's a lot of stuff, a lot of hard work to go in and mop that up and, and so that it eliminates the smoke. Um, eventually when Highway 1's opened up, we're trying to make it so that people um, won't see that and, and call 911 uh, because uh, really there is no threat of, of any sort of fire or fire restarting in that area because it's deep within the burn. It's not going to reburn again uh, per se to be any threat, uh, but it is going to be a nuisance more than anything and it's just going to take a lot of work to, to get that cleaned up and mopped up. Moving down to Davenport. Uh, looking really good around the community, um, starting to get the infrastructure back uh, up and running for that community. Uh, the only concern is the uh, uh, drainage, uh, San Vicente vintage, uh, drainage, and uh, we put a lot of crews in there today to do the work, a lot of work to do with the, the fire that is in there. It shouldn't be any sort of threat to the community, but it is adjacent to it, so it is putting up a lot of smoke, but we do have a lot of resources we plugged in there today. Um, and due to the workload and the heavy fuels and the steep topography, it'll take a couple days to accomplish what we're uh, setting to achieve within that and, and extinguish the, that part of the fire. But uh, we did, did uh, get a lot of good work done today. Southern end of the fire is looking really good. Um, the lines are holding and the mop-up continues. Highway 9 corridor, that, uh, that area surrounding the community of Felton is looking really good. That burn operation from the other day, the, the main part of that is, is burned right into the main part of the fire and uh, burning out some of those drainages so it's cleaned up rather nicely and putting that nice buffer around that community so that's making us feel really good about the safety for Felton. Uh, moving up the Highway 9 corridor, the line con uh, construction continues throughout and improvement of the line. Um, we did have some uh, various locations where we did have some small slop overs of fires there as well up near uh, Butana Park. Nothing of significance, uh, very small uh, acreage wise, only a couple acres at a time. Again, that's that fire burning in that duff, that, that, that matted material on the, the uh, forest floor and just sneaking out uh, past our lines. Because we've been patrolling lines heavily, we have crews in there working. They're able to discover that, pick those up quickly, extinguish them. Um, and we're just gonna see that over the next couple days just because of the challenges of the, the fuels that we're in, the thick duff on the floor of the, uh, the forest. It's just uh, one of those things. So it's gonna be a constant battle uh, doing it's more of a nuisance uh, thing than any and it, we don't anticipate it's going to be anything that's going to take off and, and create more fire. As we get the weather hotter and drier we're going to see more of it because the conditions are going to be the more dry and the fuels dry out even more um, but we, we should have no problem with the control f efforts again just a nuisance issue uh, regarding that. Um, interior Bonnie Dune a continued heavy workload in there and we're continuing to work away at that chipping away at that a piece at a time and that's just going to be a long ongoing process. Uh, the road clearances are going uh, rather well. We're getting in deeper. 
uh, so we can do damage inspection. We can also uh, start getting into start mopping up and putting in more control lines in those areas. Utility companies are getting in, doing their work that they need to do. The challenge is the falling trees. The, the fire damaged trees are continuing to fall. Uh, so those crews are getting in there, cutting those things up. But sometimes when they're in deep and in the, in the roadways that have been cleared, trees are falling behind them across the roadways. So it's kind of a one step forward, two steps back process just and it's going to be an ongoing problem with those trees. There are literally thousands of trees that are fire damaged and that uh, as, as time goes on and the fire continues to burn until they, we can get in and extinguish those, which is going to be a very lengthy, uh, tedious process. We're going to see that and, and they're going to fall. Again, big safety concern for our crews. Our personnel are, are uh, taking that into account. They have safety considerations, safety briefings on that. They're playing heads up so they don't get injured by it. Uh, but it is, it's still a very dangerous scenario. And for people that have stayed behind, um, we've tried to get that word out there, but again, they're in a very dangerous situation. Again, why we uh, make sure that people are evacuated from an area, that is yet another danger. We also had some civilians that were in those areas that um, were evacuated and stayed behind and uh, stepped in uh, ash pits uh, from stump holes and received significant burns in which we had to transport them. Again, why we uh, evacuate those areas and why we want people to stay out because there's a lot of hazards and a lot of hidden hazards in those areas. Um, aircraft, we uh, flew our aircraft only a, a small portion of the day because weather just did not allow for it. We were only able to drop about 55,000 gallons of water today and <clears throat> we couldn't time out our aircraft, of course, because of the small flight time. We're anticipating as the days are uh, getting closer to some better weather that we're gonna be able to fly those aircraft and, and maximize that effort. Um, so again, though they're supporting our crews on the ground, they're taking care of the, the uh, areas that are in deep drainages where our crews can't access at this point in time until the fire progresses closer to more advantageous terrain. And um, they're extinguishing what they can for us uh, before, so we don't have to get the crews very deep into that. Uh, again, we were seeing more resources show up every day and we're putting them to work within our plan. We're looking at about Monday being able to employ our uh, National Guard crews, there are, uh, we will have 12 20 person crews uh, that are 20 person of National Guard, and then an additional over that, uh, supervising that group, 44 CAL FIRE personnel that are assigned to each crew and, and supervise and, and support um, those crews. So that's gonna be a good force multiplier. We'll be able to utilize them to uh, free up our type one crews to do the more technical and dangerous work and those, uh, those National Guard crews will be really supportive of being able to do what we call cold trailing, so fi uh, fire's edge that is out, but we still, as a policy line, or put line around that fire so that it secures that and we don't have any sort of uh, reignition of the fire. And so they'll be uh, working uh, arduously uh, once we uh, get them on, on uh, Monday and be putting them to work. And uh, that uh, concludes our briefing for the day. For more information regarding the local impact of the Bay Area wildfires here in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org 2020 fires.